Welcome everybody to the Harvest Easy Gum webinar, hands-on. We're going to have some fun tonight. <clears throat> uh, myself, Sasha, Mary Beth, Carson Klimek, Jimmy Stiegel, and uh, many of you guys joining us from around the country and maybe other parts of the world. So uh, we'll let people uh, get situated into the group I'd send a message out to everyone. So if you if you want to interact with us, send us a question. Please use the the Q and A function in Zoom. That's how we'll be um, interacting with you guys. So let us know who you are, where you're from. We'd love to say hello. Um, Ken, how are you? Good to see you. Good to be with you, Doctor Jim. Thank you for joining us. Very much so. And um, more and more people are joining. So thank you guys. Uh, for the first uh, 20 registrants, uh, let us know if we have anyone out there enjoying a nice glass of wine in a pink different uh, wine glass. Uh, Mary Beth put these together for you guys. So cheers. Uh, this is, uh, you know, an after hours webinar. We wanted to say cheers and uh, just thank you guys and give you a gift uh, for joining us. And uh, obviously you got your hands on kit. Um, that you can follow along with uh, Carson and Jimmy. Carson and Jimmy, I want you guys to uh, turn your cameras on so uh, everyone can uh, see your beautiful faces. And uh, we'll get uh, started here in a couple minutes. Um, yeah, Carson and Jimmy, we're, we're blessed to know them. Uh, and they, are, they have been mentors to us at Harvest uh, with our, our product development giving us uh, critical feedback and telling us what they want and uh, many other technicians, uh, probably many of you on uh, on the webinar as well. So super glad to have you guys. We'll probably give it another, another one minute and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So yeah, I've, I've been at Harvest a year now, really enjoying the journey and uh, getting familiar with product development. Uh, that's not been something I, I've done for as many years as Sasha, our founder, CEO, um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying my time here. So why don't we jump in? Thanks, everyone. Again, uh, if, you just, if you just walked in, use the Q&A tool. Send us a question if you have any questions. Um, Mary Beth will be uh, interacting with you guys. Again, uh, Rob Lejeur, Sasha D'Arvanesian, Mary Beth Starr with Harvest. And then we have Carson Klimek going hands-on with hybrids, and then uh, Jimmy Stiegel going hands-on with uh, printed dentures for try-ins. And so just to get things started, you know, I would say that in, in dentistry in general, the things that are often the most complex are where you, you create value. Like as a technician, if you can solve the most complex problems, then you can really create value for yourself. And many years ago, that was the ceramist. And arguably still today, ceramists solve complex problems, but you know, whatever position in the lab that you solve the most complex problem, you know, you're creating a lot of value because there's some uniqueness to that, that solution. And then as companies innovate, you know, we saw the whole, you know, digital transition, which I had a fun time being a part of, but there's, you know, products that, that come out into the market to that are more focused on just making life better, making life easier. And I've been just blessed to be a part of Harvest this last year, to be a part of the Easy Gum development and the Easy Gum uh, launch. And um, I'm really excited to uh, introduce Sasha, our founder, CEO of Harvest Dental. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that, you know, say things about their, their passion for innovation, but but I can just vouch for Sasha and that he he actually believes it. He grew up in a lab. He is a lab technician at heart, and uh, he really does have a passion for the products that that he creates here at Harvest. So, Sasha, maybe just give the the, the impetus and the vision for Easy Gum, and then uh, we'll go hands on with Carson. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Rob. Uh, and uh, Rob MB, great job in putting this together. It's a lot of fun. Super excited. Uh, this is a real highlight for me. A um, little bit about me. I actually grew up in the dental laboratory. My father was a lab owner. Uh, he started the lab in 73. I was born in 74. And um, at 13 years old, I collected two things, baseball cards and LMT magazines. And I actually have uh, still 
every LMT magazine from 1985. And so I guess you can say that, uh, you know, I'm a uh, an avid lover of all things dental lab. Um, growing in a, up in a dental lab, you know, I think was for me, uh, one of the highlights of my life. I mean, I, uh, you know, my friends went to the park. I wanted to go to the lab with dad. It was my favorite place to be the smells, the sounds. Um, you know, he used to let me play with molten wax, and burn my hands. And I just kind of loved the, the environment. Um, you know, I, I remember fondly, um, my, my dad's, uh, just kind of experience as an entrepreneur, right. Dealing with doctors, um, and, uh, you know, I remember him coming home for dinner, but then having to rush back to the lab to uh, to get that case out. And, you know, I would beg my mom to let me go with him. And most times, you know, she would say no, but there were those times that she said yes. And, and so growing up, my dad always said to us as kids, I got, I got three brothers, you know, he would say, you know, I you know, I'm a smile maker and I'm, I'm part of God's solution to the human smile. God uses me to create smiles. And when you think about smiles and what that means to the human race, like, I don't know why as a young kid, it just resonated with me. And, um, and so I always knew that this was the community that I wanted to live in. Um, and, and so the, the passion to serve smile makers such as yourselves um, became a, a purpose and, and, a, and a lifelong vision and goal. And in 2004, um, I started Harvest Dental in a two-car garage. Um, and, um, you know, I guess you can say kind of the rest is history. Um, part of what I love about this industry is the creativity. Um, and part of me... Um, with regards to just, you know, serving lab owners is just the true joy. And, um, you know, there is something about simplicity uh, in, in, in the laboratory that is refreshing. You know, the, the, the lab is a complex environment and, um, and, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, he, he said, this it's a quote that has actually resonated with me and is really kind of a core principle with regards to product development but he said this simplicity is especially hard to achieve and there is something about stripping away to an essence and when it comes to product development you know this is really i think kind of a core principle and and so first, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. This is a big day. Um, and, you know, everything that we develop at Harvest starts with you. It really does. And we're entrepreneurs just like you. And we understand the pain. We understand the fear, right? I lived through it as my dad, you know, kind of just grinded through you know, the day at the lab. And, and yet, you know, as entrepreneurs, we also know when we find peace and when we find freedom. And so we spend a lot of time talking to lab owners and technicians about the business side of aesthetics, right? Understanding the the jobs that you're trying to get done in an eight hour day, the pains you feel, the gains you need. And, you know, take for example, gingiva composite work, right? That's why we're here. Yes, the jobs that you need to get done are functional, right? There's a race for time and you need speed and aesthetics, but it's also social, right? Talented technicians, are hard to find and you need to scale and grow. But most importantly, and, and this really is, I think what I've learned from my father um, is emotional 
the job is also emotional. And there's an element of stress and anxiety, right, related to the deadlines as you watch the day pass you by. And so, you know, in closing here, I think, you know, the new composite strip, right, exists to address these pains. First, your teams can now achieve gingiva aesthetics in 10 minutes when it used to take you 45. The second is that easy gum is super easy to train and scale, right? And Carson has a great story that I'd love for him to share. And third and finally, right, that feeling of accomplishment, being able to, to leave the job, to leave the lab and be home in time to eat dinner with the family. That's why we created Easy Go. And so I just wanna thank you all again for taking the time to join us. And I really do hope to meet each and every one of you one day. Thank you so much, Rob, back to you. Thank you, Sasha. Love that, love the passion. It's very genuine, I can vouch for it for sure. All right, so we're gonna transition to Carson Klimek. Um, I'm assuming everyone here knows who Carson is, but if not, you should go to YouTube, look at master dental technician. He's got an amazing YouTube channel with some amazing content on there. I first met Carson like six or seven years ago, um, in, in my prior life uh, doing design stuff. And, uh, Carson's truly a really talented technician, but he has a passion for like teaching and training. And like, he's very curious and he wants to understand things and he wants to, you know, push material to its limits and, you know, see what it can really do. And so we put Easy Gum in Carson's hand a couple months ago, and uh, he had some pretty good initial reactions. And then he gave us some feedback, and then he started working with it, and he, he just started doing some amazing work. So Carson, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, so excited to see uh, how you can help technicians use Easy Gum in only a few minutes. So. Tell us what you got. Tell us some stories, and uh, I'm going to leave it over to you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Rob, for the nice introduction. Um, I'm doing a lot of videos, actually, and doing a live webinar is much more nerve-wracking than making videos, because in videos, you have a lot of editing. So what I'm going to show you today is a couple of things. Um, I prepared some models. So first, this is a model that you're going to get into the welcome box or when you order the box, the welcome box, there's going to be in there. There's going to be one side for hybrid and another one for denture. What Jimmy is going to show you, um, I'm going to use this model to apply the easy bond today. I'm going to show you this. Then I have another model here. I'm going to show you in this model how to apply the easy gum strip. I prepared this model because I did a virtual cutback here. I, I prepared the finish line with some burrs and I separated the teeth a little bit. And then Easy Gum and Sasha just came out with a new um, special staining kit. It's not a staining kit, it's more like modifier kit, I, I would call it. And I prepared another model here. I'm going to show you really quick at the end of the session. We only have 15 minutes here in my part. I'm going to show you how to apply these modifiers here, and then I'm going to have a finished one. And we can go over all these different things, how I glaze it, and what's about these little plugs here. So let's get started. Um, Easy Gum has a full package. So what you want to do first, you want to take your appliance, and you want to sand blast it a little bit because you want to get all the dirt off. There's a little bit of dirt on here. And you want to get some bonding, some, it's kind of uh, intermedium for the easy gum to stick to the appliance. Because if you take like PMMA and put just easy gum on there, there's no chemical bond there. So easy gum, easy bond will actually put the chemical bond on there. And it's really easy. What you're gonna do, you're gonna put it into the little um, little jaw here, and we don't need much. I'm gonna demonstrate this. 
and I hope you can see this and really lightly apply the easy bond onto the material. It doesn't take much. I would put it also in between the teeth because you're gonna put some easy gum in there. And then you're gonna put it into the light cure box. And I recommend not curing it more than 90 seconds because if you cure it more than 90 seconds, actually the layer is curing fully and then you don't have the sticky surface anymore and easy gum does not stick to it anymore. So um, I prepared this already. This is not 100% sticky anymore, but we get the job done. It comes, easy gum comes in different shades. I'm gonna use here today the original pink and it comes in a really nice pouch. And inside the pouch is a light proof strip or there are actually two strips in here. And when you open those, there are actually two strips in there. We take it out. And you're gonna take the easy gum. It comes off really easily. Oops. And peel it off. And then the fun part begins. You just put it onto the appliance. Let me see if I can hold it here. I'm gonna start in the middle and you and you start here. You just apply with your fingers. What I recommend if you use your fingers, use a little bit of Vaseline. So you put your fingers in there and then you take the Vaseline and really easily put it onto the appliance. If you have like big fingers like I am, then what I recommend is you're gonna use some modeling liquid. And I know an NX gum is gonna come out with something too. So you're gonna use the modeling liquid and you're gonna use the silicone tips. You can you can order those from Amazon. They cost like five dollars or so, and use the size number two. So and all it is, you're gonna I'll you're gonna... send a link uh, out to everyone for the the Amazon link that Carson has for his silicone tips that he's using right now. So you're gonna apply it and you push it into the interproximal area, and it works really, really fast. So I'm gonna demonstrate this really, really fast. So um, Rob mentioned something really, really in interesting. So when I when I first got Easy Gum into my hands, I I wanted to make a little movie and I wanted to film it in in my studio. And we had uh, we had the the light boxes up and we had like large windows with a lot of with a lot of sunlight coming in. So I and I didn't think about it. So what 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 happened was actually that the strip started to cure within two to three minutes. So I was about to call Rob and say, "All right, what what is this? Right, I don't have any time to do this." And then I realized, yeah. Uh, maybe I should close the blinds. So I closed the blinds and I just had my um, light boxes up, my LEDs, and then we started filming. And then I had like 10 minutes. If you use a light bar from Harvest Dental and you put it onto the warm light setting, then you get actually um, 35 minutes out of the strip. But if you have big light sources, then um, you have to hurry a little bit. But that's okay. Um, when you have multi-units like this, like multi-unit interfaces, and you push this over here into the uh, basal part, what's going to happen is sometimes the easy gum goes into the multi-unit interfaces. What you want to do is <clears throat> you want to take some, some of these plugs, and you can get these plugs from digital arches. These are actually, actually from OptiSplint. And you just put those in here, and that will prevent the easy gum to go into the material or into the multi unit interfaces. That's so nice. when we nice little pro tip there. When we when we filmed 
when we filmed the um, the Easy Gum video, what you can see on YouTube, um, I have a I have a coworker. His name is his name is Mark, and I don't know if Mark is on the call today. He wanted to join, but Mark Mark has no experience in dental technology. He used to be the guy who fills up your vending machines <laughs> in your lab, and he was really interested in in all on four, and he was really interested in in all the dental technology. So I sat down with him and I showed him Easy Gum one time, or maybe two times, and then Mark did his first case with Easy Gum with no dental experience, and it turned out really, really fantastic. Um, I have to give a big shout out. I mean, maybe it's because he's really talented, but. I was I was joking with Sasha one time and we I was saying, hey, why don't you why don't you why don't you make a tagline? Easy gum is so easy, even your dental assistant can do it. So I don't want to insult your dental assistants, but but it, it is really that easy. You see, I'm applying it and I'm not even looking at it. Right? I'm just just putting it on here. So when when you're done, you can get a special tool that that Harvest Dental developed, and it comes into this little box. And what it does, it has actually a little a little tip here on the side, and it has a little tool on the other side. And I think this tool is genius because now, how do you get everything off here on these T's? So let me see if you can see this correctly. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tool and you just carve it off. And what I like about EasyGum is, it is, like I said, it's a full system. And you can make it as complicated or as easy as you want. If you want to make a fast case, you can make this really, really fast. If you want to make it a little bit more complicated and get a little more, more in depth, they have modifiers, they have some um, additional composite I'm going to show you here in a second. And you can make it make it your own. You, you can make it as, as nice or as easy as you want. I was I was in a in a um in, in a couple of surgeries all on four surgeries um, last week with, with a local oral surgeon. And we did 10 full arch cases in three days. And I have to say, they they turned out really, really amazing. And Mark did all of these cases, by the way. He he applied all of the cases onto the, onto the printed or milled PMMA. And it turned out really, 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 really easy. So... Now that you have um, the PJ screen, now, now we can go ahead and you can, with the composite tool, make it a little bit wet. You can define if you want, if you want to do this extra step now, you can go ahead and define it even more. For example, you can get your root shape right here. So let's say you're going to go here between, get the roots. Make it a little bit more pronounced here at the free margins. Go around here. And you, you can make it, like I said, as easy or as complicated as you want. So I don't want to spend all day long now here on this one. You can you can then um, get this one smoothed out a little bit. And later on, you're going to take the plugs off. Another good tool here is in the silicon tool is this edge tool. It has a little bit of an edge. And what it does is you can go ahead with this super sharp tip and go around here and really redefine your CJ and make it as nice. You can also just use your fingers and the tool, right? If you don't have a dental education, 
I do. I could spend all day long on this case, but it's called easy gum, so you want to make it easy. But there are some really talented technicians out there, and they they will take this to the next level. They will. They will. I I can see this already that some technician they will take this one to the next level with all the modifiers that are in there. So talking of modifiers, that is a um, pre-cured one with the with the with the easy gum original pink on there, and then they have some great modifiers. For example, they have dark red plum, which is which is fantastic. And I put a little bit on here, and then I'm going to show it to you how it looks. Close this, and they have night. Night blue, and we all know these colors, right? We we are using these colors for a long time with some of our ceramics, for example. And this is amazing. This is great. They came out with this one. It's called Root, and you will love this. I love this. This is this is this is amazing. I don't know who came up with the idea, but it is, it is great. So it's a little bit of an orangey feel. And what I recommend is. Use a regular brush, right? Use a brush and you go in there. You can also, if you want, if these modifiers, show it to you here. If these modifiers are a little bit too intense for you, you can also mix them. You can use original, original pink and you can mix them a little bit and then apply it like this. In this example, I'm going to apply it just like that. So I'm going to use a little bit of the dark plum. And you want to get some contrast. So Easy Gum is all about creating contrast. So you're going to put a little bit in between the roots here. Example, I can put a little bit red on here. I should have brought my loops. My, my eyes are getting bad. And I usually I usually work with loops, but I don't have any. So then you're gonna apply this one, for example, in between the roots. You can apply a little bit of the blue. The blue is amazing because it's it's translucent blue, and you can apply it a little bit here at the end of the margins. Here at the end of the roots, you can apply that here. It gives it a little bit more depth because the tissue is usually a little bit darker here. What you can also do is they also have like an amazing reddish dark pink, and you can apply the dark pink like here in this area. So it gives a little bit more contrast. So you have the light area here, and when it gets darker, you have the darker area here, and that looks really, really nice. But then going to have your your root. And the root is amazing. You, you have always some blanched tissue here. For example, if you have it here around the free margin, you can put this on. And then this is like a translucent material. It looks really, really nice. And then you can fade it out slightly into the root. Here again. Put it around the free margin. I think that's where it looks the best. And you fade it out into the free margin. So, Sasha, how much time do I have, Rob? You're you're good, man. I'd say another couple minutes. You know, you're flowing well. Okay. So, uh, there was there was some uh, questions that came in, so maybe you could field a few. One of them was, um, what were the scan flags that you used to block the holes and where, and where do we get those from? Well, the scan flags to block the holes, they are from digital arches. And if you know OptiSplint, I made an OptiSplint video on my YouTube channel, you can see it. And so the, these scan flags are there. When you do a immediate load, for example, and you finished you finish this one here, then you can you can scan this one actually, or you can 
you can put this into multi units if you do a conversion. If you do a converted denser, you can plug this into the multi unit interfaces of the temp cylinders and scan the entire denture. Then the library for ExoCAD will align with the OptiSplint library. And then you have, if you don't can, if you cannot capture a byte correctly, for example, if you cannot capture the scan flex correctly from the splint that is for it's like a safety but but i like it a lot because it prevents the material go into the into the multi-unit interfaces but it's it's from digital arches so Amazing. back to and then uh, the um um for Printed nano ceramics. Would you apply uh, prior to or post curing the print? I, I assume post curing the print. Yeah, post. Okay, perfect. And then, um, when you scrape away the easy gum on the teeth, are you uh, recycling that and putting it at the distal of the arch? Yes. Yeah, you can do this here. It it's still. It's still really, really flexible. And what you can take, you, you can take it with your finger, apply it on the distal of the arch, and that's it. You you can you can um you can scrape it away from here, you can scrape it away from, from there. And it's still, even with all the lights here that I have in a studio, it's still still good. So I have a lot of working time here. Amazing. And then that's like a fully cured appliance. I applied some root here, some radish in between, and then I glazed it. So what you can do, what I use for glazing is nano varnish from Draver, for example, a really a light coat in one sweep motion. You can use OptiGlaze. That looks really, really fantastic as well. And I know for a fact that Harvest Dental is coming out with its own light cure unit, because when you light cure composite, it's really important, especially if you have printed materials or even milled materials that you don't overheat the material. You, so you don't want to put it in a, into a flash cure unit that creates a lot of heat, because what can happen, the material can warp actually. And that's the worst thing you can do on all on four cases. But yeah, I think it's it's a great material. It's easy to use and you, you should give it a try. And and I cannot wait what what Jimmy has to say now. Yeah. So Carson, thank you so much. And um I'll let all you guys know that uh next month, so four weeks from today. Uh, Carson's going to be doing an advanced aesthetic hands-on course um, online on Zoom, uh, similar to what we're doing today. So he'll go more heavily into using the modifiers underneath Easy Gum and over the top of Easy Gum if you really want to uh, elevate your case. And he'll be um, taking a little more time to field questions along the way. Carson, thank you so much for going hands-on with us. And I also want to thank you for taking... Uh, a lot of the pictures, um, Carson took a lot of the pictures, most of the pictures that we're using in our marketing collateral on our website and on our brochures. And Carson, very, very talented technician. Thank you so much for uh, working with us and giving us feedback. And so now I want to bring in uh, Jimmy Stiegel. Uh, you know, I feel like he's a man that doesn't need an introduction, but if if you guys have been living under a rock the past year, then uh, you know I'll introduce Jimmy Stiegel. Um, one of the foremost experts uh, in digital dentures um, was very, very early on in, in the digital denture uh, workflows and design, you know, scanning acquisition and order setup. And he's got some great content online, some great courses online, and he's got more coming up. And so Jimmy's going to highlight the use of easy gum in a, um, a denture try-in. So Jimmy... Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your feedback and uh, excited to hear and see and learn from you and how you share your experience with EasyGum and in a printed try-in workflow. Thank you. 
I just learned a new Zoom trick. Did you know that you can, there's three buttons on every picture and you can click the pin button to the one you want to focus on? That's that's good for an old guy who can't see. So yeah, Carson, really, after that, right? And you see, I have all my modifiers, like I really know what I'm doing, but Carson is the guy that's going to tell you magically how to make all these colors look good. I, I just have them out here because I'm always playing with them. And I've been playing with materials on the market with digital dentures for some time because I quite often get that question or comment from labs. Is it, you know, my, my dentist doesn't, you know, quite know how to understand this, this tooth colored denture try-in thing and when they're supposed to wear it and all that. And it would be better if it was pink. So, you know, some labs have just said, well, I'll just pin print the pink one in, in the teeth and put it together and that'll be the try-in. But, you know, the prototype is easier. You don't have to glue teeth in and it's fast. And it, with the loose stone system, it's just as strong. So today I'm at the Academy getting, uh, Dead Supply Academy, getting ready for a two-day training starting tomorrow on loose stone. So I thought it'd be a great time to experiment and to get prepared for the webinar. But, you know, my 15 minutes, I'm just going to talk about, you know, the ease of easy gum because, in the past, right, when we wanted to make one of these monolithic things turn pink, we had a couple of choices out there. I used um, Annex Dent for a while, OptiGlaze for a bit. Both those, to me, were more challenging to use um, and certainly more expensive. Um, I went over to GC Gradia and did okay, but you still had to have a lot of artistry. You still, you know, needed to know when and where and how to paint. And um, not too many uh, weeks ago, months ago, a, a company reached out to me called um, ID uh, Dentalis, and I think out of Mexico, and they had some pink colored things in syringes and um, in jars. And, you know, I found it okay, uh, a little bit sticky, but certainly did the job, right? I could just scoop it out, kind of roll it around and push it on there and, and it made pink. And, you know, it was my go-to. But I had talked to Sasha and knew what he was doing and was just, you know, couldn't wait for a stick of gum, right? A stick of pink. I always said, if somebody could just do this and make it easy and fast, then it really becomes viable because we don't want to spend a lot of time or a lot of money on, you know, turning this thing pink, right? I'd like to do it quick, easy, and passable because typically this is a an appliance that the patient's wearing for one day, two days, three days, a couple of weeks, or in the case of an immediate denture, maybe eight to 10 weeks. So there are different levels of how much effort I would want to put into this or how much money I'd want to put into it. And I think for a prototyping of a denture or call it a digital try-in that the patient's going to wear for one to three days, it shouldn't take a lot of effort and it shouldn't cost a lot of money. But having all these tools in front of me, right, just opens up all the creative thoughts again about, man, I could really make this thing look good. I'm not going to go back through the packaging, right? He's talked about it. You know, I love the way that these guys have put this together. It's very neat, very simple to understand. The instructions on the box and just multiple shades. I, was, I think they had three or four um, regular and a couple of opaque from light to dark. And they're just so easy to handle and get out. So, you know, I've been playing with that model of trying to mimic Karsten and, you know, putting some modifiers and, and some uh, just colors on there to make that side but, you know, I'm the denture guy, so I have already painted the um, Easy easy Gum Bond on here. It's been sitting there for a few minutes. So my next step is to do exactly like Sasha, and that's to get the strip out. Now, a whole strip will typically do most dentures unless there's a lot of height here. And I might use one and a half and a big height. But typically, I am getting four dentures, right, out of a bag because there's two strips in each pack. There's two two packs in each bag. So four dentures. So it's very affordable. And again, it is simply as Karsten said, right? We, uh, What I love about it is that the best tool for this stuff is your fingers, at least in the beginning. And uh, I too uh, will put a little Vaseline or, or some of the bonding agent on my glove, anything to help it flow a little bit. Then I'll just work around to the back and then, you know, take off the excess, set that aside in case I need it and, you know, start applying it. I'm trying to use light, even pressure. I don't really want to get it too thin in certain areas just yet. I want to make sure that I have, you know, a good coverage and I want to make sure I'm down in the papillas. 
but and one that might be this tall, maybe I would need to add some more, but I don't think so. I, I used about a little over half of that strip on this half of the denture. But you want to be pretty conscious of keeping your glove clean, Jimmy. <laughs> but how thin you're putting it and how many um, nuances in the surface you're giving it with your fingers. But you certainly want to get it down into the embrasures and over the margin a little bit. And then I just take a look and see, okay, where are the, the bumps that I need to get out? Is it too smooth? Does it need texture? Does it need more smoothing? Do I need to get down in the papilla? One of the things that um, Karsten mentioned is that, you know, Sasha came out with this kit and you're looking at a great deal of his color. So there's um, three, four, five syringes that are bigger and five syringes that are smaller. And the bigger syringes are basically modifiers or a slightly gelled version of the Easy Gum itself. So if, you know, I wanted to touch up areas so I'm, I'm using the original pink easy gum strip and this is the original pink modifier in the syringe. So I could easily come in here and add a little bit more as I'm going right in those embrasures just to make it a little easier um, for me to clean up. And again, this all comes from wanting to be efficient. I could completely cover half the teeth and then carve it back, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the lazy guy in the room, so I'm I'm trying to do it the most efficient way. But, you know, that's not bad. And now I'm starting to get my color more uniform. Work it up to the border. And give me half a denture and a glass of wine, Rob. That's a little uh, challenging sometimes. We gave you a glass of wine, Jimmy. <laughs> you said your said. wife confiscated it. She did. She did. But I, I grabbed another one. All right. So I don't know if it's showing up well with my webcam, but you, you should be able to start seeing a little bit of lightness over the root eminences. And that depends a lot on the contour of your denture. So you want to plan for that as you're you know, getting this ready. And what I do is then I just come back and I just push a little harder on those root eminences. And you'll start to see, you know, the color of the denture come through, which actually looks like, you know, the lighter root eminence. Now we can go back as Carson did with that, that really cool shade called root, which is in this well here. And I could paint that on top of those root eminences. I don't do this every time, but if I'm looking at this and I feel like it's too smooth, I have a special tool that I use it in. I'll show you, but I like, you know, the tools that, that Karsten used, you know, the tool that comes with it is really genius. And uh, one thing he didn't tell you that he taught me was that if you'll take your burr and, and kind of sharpen the edge of this circle a little bit, it makes trimming that a tad easier. And it really does. And so I'll just use this tool and work around and get back to that margin Yeah, this was genius. I don't know who came up with this. Uh, Sasha, you should take credit for it. If not, uh, Mayor, Mayor Beth, you should. Well, I would, but it was totally Sasha. <laughs> That's the story and how it happens. <laughs> we were, he was in the office and he was showing it to a lab that had stopped by and they were talking about it. He grabbed a paper clip, huh. <laughs> kind of unfurled it, and then he was just like, we have a tool. Yeah, you, you got to come up with a better story than that. Oh, that was good. <laughs> All right, so I too, the silicone, um, this one really works for me. And and what I'll do, especially if I have excess, is that I'll push it from the incisal to the gingiva. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of beefing up that cervical roll anatomy a little bit. And then I can flip it around and just like... Carson was doing it, tap it in. So I got a little bit more anatomy there, got it away from the margin a little bit. And so 
I, you know, I don't know what else to do to this, guys. I'm telling you, it's that easy. Uh, I, I'm, I would cure this, right? I'd pick up my light and cure this. I'd paint the glaze on it, and then, and then I'd, I'd put it in the cure box to get it done. The glaze that I'm using is the uh, Lucitone Digital Print uh, Fuse Step 3 Total glaze we use on the printed teeth and, and the uh, printed bases. It does great on this as well, but OptiGlaze, any of those that he mentioned are also good. So if I'm, I'm here and I said, you know, I'd like to have some more texture, maybe what might, you know, look like stippling. And I found this big chunky stencil brush. And if you will just lightly tap it into the easy gum while it's still soft, right? You kind of add a stipple texture to give it a little bit um, better light refraction. I don't know if you can see it well, but it, it really looks very natural. So that's all I do there, right? And then I'm going to grab my curing light and just get this set, right? And it's you know, just a few minutes, or, you know, a couple of cycles of this you know, 10, 20 seconds. So about 20 seconds a section and I'll get it set up. And then I'll paint the glaze on it and I'll set the glaze with the light and then I'll put it in the curing oven. Jimmy, about how, how many minutes per arch do you, would you estimate, you know, yourself or the average technician of applying easy gum? Oh, starting with bonding agent, using just the easy gum, you know, whatever shade you want, doing all the finger work and little instrument work. I've done it in six to seven minutes. Nine minutes if you want to be safe and fair and maybe, you know, a little bit more forgiving. It really depends on, you know, how you get it around the teeth. I've gotten to where I'm more careful of not really pushing it down over the teeth as much. I'm going to have to trim it back, but I certainly want to get my gingival margin and that, that cervical roll well. I want to define the roots and a lot of that's got to do in the preparation beforehand as well. So, you know, I could look at this, say, well, what does it need? You know, if I wanted to, you know, start grabbing some of these, you know, really cool modifiers, I, I could do that, right? I could, you know, take one of the darker stains and start just enhancing some areas to make them stand out a little bit. I could take um, that root color, which is here, which I, I, I'm like, Carson, I really like it. And I could enhance by painting the surface just a little bit lighter and anytime I, I add those modifiers i come back with the little wand light and make sure they're set jeremy what uh curing light are you using someone just asked right there um, your spot the, the smart light pro that is on the instructor's bench at the dent supply academy which is why i'm using it but <laughs> i have a more portable version that's also the dent supply light that works really well for me and it's very affordable um, and so <laughs> that is it, right? Easy is my favorite part. When, when Sasha came up to me in Vegas and, and showed me the sample, I said, you finally, somebody's finally done it. This is ideally what I had been wishing for is something I could, you know, take out of a pack and, you know, press it on and light cure it and be done, right? It's pink because, you know, for this purpose, that's all we need. But, you know, I will never be Karsten, right? But you know, you can do other things with these modifiers. Like I took this sample, right? And you can see that I've already added some modifiers. And so I did that before I put the easy gum. And so I'll come back to this and I'll lay the easy gum out and that'll give maybe some depth to that characterization a little bit. It still won't look as good as cars. Right. Mm -hmm. And I started another denture this afternoon to see a whole denture and I, and I did something different, right? I took one of, um, one of the modifiers in the big syringe and I try to create a cervical roll with it before I put the easy gum on to see how that done. I hadn't done that yet, but I just got these yesterday. So I started thinking of ways I could use this other than just patching up areas or maybe touching up little things. But I think I can use this if I wanted to create, you know, a little bit more uh, inside the papilla uh, contour here or around the gums or even the, the cervical, uh, the, the, peripheral roll border if I wanted to enhance that I could do that with this syringe material and then just kind of lay in the easy gum to fill it and still be pretty darn efficient but you won't see me do that very often because I'm not Karsten and I'm not the artist I'm 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 gonna make it pink and uh so the patient won't say why does my denture look like that or is that what my denture is gonna look like so Jimmy. love it Karsten 
um, Sasha, Rob, home run in my book. Absolute home run because it does exactly what I wanted something to do. Easy, fast, make the darn thing pink, right? And not have to answer any of that questions anymore, right? It, this way, I would do this on all my triads, right? This would go out and, you know, I'm not answering the question to the patient. <laughs> Is that what my denture is going to look like? No. <laughs> I love that, Jimmy. Jimmy, thank you so much for uh, for walking us through your workflow. Uh, Carson, why don't you, you come back on screen and Mary Beth come back on screen and, and we'll take a few questions. Um, before we jump into the questions, though, I, I wanted to just point out I'll just share super quick. Um, we have a Facebook group called Pink Different. Uh, MB put a link uh, into um, into the chat for you guys to join. Please join. Uh, this group is for all things pink. It's for, it could be wax cases, right? It could be anything you're doing that is sharing passion for pink aesthetics. We would love you guys to join. And it's also a resource tool. We've got like links to the IFU. So some people asked for, you know, curing time and wavelength and all that. So I could come here and click on the IFUs. Um, and then you you go to our, our article that we have on Harvest Dental. So a lot of resources here in the pink different group. So please find that, join that. Uh, technicians will be sharing tips and tricks and sharing some of their stories and some of the, the things that they're doing. Uh, it's going to be the place where we will communicate uh, some of our innovations back with you guys and product development back with you guys. And maybe we'll select uh, some of the, the the people that join the pink different group to be some, you know, early beta testers on some of our other products that we have. So it's, it's for sure a place to share, but it's also a place to learn. We have some of our documentation in that group that goes through the IFUs and stuff like that. So there was a question that came in, um, around, you know, what can you put easy gum on, right? And Sasha, I'll let you answer this. What is the indicate, like what materials will bond with easy gum? Yeah. And so essentially we, we want, you know, the laboratory is a flexible environment, right? You've got multiple material use cases in the lab. And so we, I mean, this is a three-year development, right? This, this was not an overnight product. This took us three years. Um, I mean, and, and so essentially we have FDA clearance for nano ceramics. So Rodin, um, Onyx Tough, those types of materials. Uh, we've got FDA clearance for PMMAs, printed or milled, um, titanium or metals, um, and zirconia. And so you have a, uh, you know, a, a full kind of, uh, you know, uh, flexible table of products and materials that this material can, can be used on. Sasha, does the bonding agent in that you sent me work on all those materials or do you yes. need other so bonding? The, the, the FDA indication is dependent and linked to the bonding agent. So all of that was developed, uh, you know, in, yeah, in sequence. Thank you, Jimmy, for clear, clarifying that. Uh, that's sweet because that uh, Dentalis has a bond for PMMA and another bonding agent for zirconia. So it's yeah. a- Most do, yeah. yeah. So ours is ours is an all-in-one. Um, it'll also work with other materials on the market. And so it really is a, uh, uh, you know, a flexible solution. It's really easy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, another question. Uh, Looks like 28 uh, or 15 open questions still in the Q&A. Yeah, so a lot around curing time. It's, uh, you know, a couple of minutes, uh, depending on uh, the wavelength of your um, curing oven. If you go to the, sorry, it's actually 40 seconds in halogen cure, 400 to 500 nanometer wavelength, or 20 seconds in an LED cure, 440 to 9, 490 nanometer wavelength. But, you know, all that's listed in our, our IFUs. Um, question came in on uh, what do you do prior to glazing as far as cleaning the prosthesis? Carson, I'll let you answer that question. So, you know, you applied easy gum, you've cured it. Now, what are you going to do prior to glazing? So, like I said, I have a whole YouTube video of the whole process of doing easy gum. And you can 
take a look at it. I, I believe it's my latest video about easy pink. But what I do is um, you, you can grind on it a little bit. You can grind on there after you cure it. Then I usually um, steam it really good. And you can also put it into an ultrasonic cleaner if you want to have it really, really clean. But I, I, I steam it. And then I apply the nano vanish or the optic lathe. So steam clean, pretty common. And then polishing. Uh, we can also do a standard pumice polish workflow. You don't have to do glaze. It's also indicated to use pumice polish as well. Um, answer the curing questions, the curing one question. Uh, someone asked uh, where they're going to get their pink different wine glass. That's a really important question. What I will say is that we do have another webinar scheduled September 25th with Carson. Like I said, we will drop the registration link into the pink different Facebook group in a couple days. So please join that group. And the first 20 people that sign up to that link in the pink different Facebook group, you'll get access to a, a nice hands-on kit and gift box. Might be a little uh, surprise in there for you. We wanna go above and beyond and uh, uh, bless you guys and, and the time that you take. So yeah, Sash, you can you can show the, the pink different uh, gift box that we sent out. There was a nice uh, wine glass in there. So register, be one of the first 20, watch the pink different Facebook group and um, love to have you in on that. Um, Jimmy, where do you, where's your bow tie? Someone's asking you didn't, you didn't wear a bow tie tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've been printing dentures all day, man. I can't wear a bow tie. Jimmy, what if somebody wants to kind of optimize their 3d print game? Where do they go? Who do they, who do they contact here to serve dental? I'm going to put the, put your, uh, your oh, website yeah, in yeah. the chat here. Um, Best in the business. Um, if you have any questions, need support, want to optimize your your three D print workflow, um, want to scale that part of your business, uh, Jimmy would be happy to answer your questions. I put his uh, website here in the in the chat. Um, I would call him the secret weapon uh, in the industry. So uh, anybody that that needs any any help in that area man jimmy's the jimmy's the guy um rob when because i've been brought up in the loose stone digital print and yes i'm now i'm doing this thing on my own it's outside of dent supply but i still use it a lot one of the things i've been very sensitive to is temperature and one of the rules with loose stone digital print materials is you never put a steam cleaner to it especially oh, okay. in the uncured phase so um i follow carson's second option which is i throw it in the ultrasonic to clean it a, a little bit after i take one of the scotch bright or i really like the wagner aeroflex wheel and just do a light buff on it right just to kind of knock the shine and the the oxygen inhibitive layer off but then i take it to the ultrasonic and distilled water and run it for three or four minutes then i come back and paint the glaze and put it in the cure box awesome thanks for sharing that jimmy well, as we're um, wrapping up, continue to ask questions and we'll make sure that uh, we answer all those. But I want to give it over to Mary Beth Starr. She's been at Harvest now five years and really enjoyed working with her. And she's going to talk about some exciting promotions that we have. You know, if you guys are asking, you know, where to buy Easy Gum, uh, you can go to harvestdental.com and see a list of all of our dealers and our distribution partners. And for sure, uh, buy, you know, pick whichever favorite deal you have a relationship with, you can buy from them. And then Mary Beth, why don't you talk about some of the exciting promotions we have today for people that are on the webinar? Sure. So we have a couple of, we call them fast, fast, really fast action items because this, uh, this first promo is going to expire on the 30th. Um, and it's just because it's so good. <laughs> we can't afford for it to go much longer than that. And we're only offering it to the people who are attending this webinar. So it's not it's not for the general public. It's just geared for the people who um, are giving us your time tonight. So the first one is um, if you buy a trial kit, you'll receive the full set of modifiers. 
So to kind of put that in perspective, the trial kit costs $179, but the retail value of the modifiers is over $600. So it's a really, really good deal. And we're only gonna run it through Friday. Um, and like Rob said, you can order from your favorite dealer there. If you go to our website, and you go down to where to buy, you can click on a link and you can bring that up. You can also order it at harvestdental.com. Um, we're both offering this month, so all is good there. Um, one thing that we are doing is when you order, make sure that you order using your um, the email address that you signed up with, because that's how we're kind of corralling this from getting like way out of control. <laughs> So make sure you do that. And um, uh, so that's promo number one. And then we thought that we would run like a fun social media promotion. Um, so like after you get your easy gum, we would love for you to share a post on Facebook or Instagram or both um, talking about Harvest Easy Gum and like, what is it done or what do you think it's going to do to make your life better as a dental technician or what is it going to do to make your life easier day to day um so if you do that and you tag harvest dental and then we need you to use like two hashtags that say think different and harvest dental then we'll be able to kind of track it down and on the 6th of february or february wow i'm way out of <laughs> on the 6th of september um, we'll, we'll kind of go through everybody. We'll see who's tagged us and then we'll give you a gift. And the gift is going to be, um, a four pack of, um, the harvest easy gum strips, um, of the original paint. So it's important to like keep us tagged and keep us in the know. Um, I'm going to put all of this in an email and send it out to everybody who's registered tonight so that you can just have the information super readily available. But if you have any questions, if you have um, if there are things that you want to discuss that maybe we don't hit tonight, my contact information will be in there, and I would love to help and answer any questions that anybody might have. And we have the best resources. We've got Sasha, who's the big brains of the org and <laughs> our thought leader, yes, and Rob, who just kind of makes things happen for us, and we got Jimmy and and Karsten, who have been aces over the last month while we've been planning this. So we're here to help. And if anybody needs anything, we'll be around. Thanks, MB. Yeah, uh, we will send you guys an email uh, with the promotion details and with the social media details. So then there'll be instructions there in writing for everyone who registered. So I think we're kind of wrapping up. Any more questions come in that we need to answer? Um, I'm seeing some on the uh, Q and a, it looks like we've got 18 open questions. Answered some of them already. Um, so did you answer the, uh, for printed nano ceramics? Would you apply prior to post curing the print? Yeah, we talked about that one. So it would be okay. cure, cure the printed arch first and then apply easy gum. Okay. All right. So you've gone through all these for some reason. I don't know why they're showing on mine open. I just kept them up so I could see okay. some of them, make sure we got them. Um, actually, someone asked, is it best to cure easy gum before applying the modifiers? Or would you put the easy gum down and then put the modifiers on and cure all at once? Would you any recommendation, Carson or Jimmy, on that, on that workflow? So you can you can do it either way. I tried it both i tried it before glazing everything and i tried it after glazing everything the advantage is when you do it before you're going to cure it you can still move around the main part of the easy gum if you want to change something if you want to correct something it's easy to change um the downside is it can get a little bit messy right because you have a lot of materials on there if you don't have a uh, good light cure unit that it doesn't penetrate so deep, then it might not cure 100%. So like I said, Harvest Dental is coming out with a great light cure unit pretty soon. And that should solve this problem. But I would start probably curing the easy gum first and then apply the modifiers just to get used to it. Don't, don't jump into the deep end. 
<laughs> and 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 play around with it too much, right? I would I would take baby steps. One thing I'll I'll add as well is that you know we we spend a lot of time trying to to build in um, the right translucency on the trip on on the strip so that you can use it, you know, without and with modifiers underneath. And so to kind of get you know a real lifelike type penetration of of color, um, you know that option is available where you would go with modifiers prior to applying the strip, go with modifiers, lock them in like here, and then apply the strip and then like here. So that also is available. That's that's my preferred way. Um, you, you have to be as talented as Karsten to put these intense colors on the top of something and still make them look good. Like I can put them on the denture first and then put the easy strip and it covers up a lot of my inadequacies, but it still <laughs> looks pretty good. <laughs> Uh, someone else. I, I like I like the modifiers really good, and you can apply those on the surface because they are um, really nice and translucent. Um, yeah. Yeah. I noticed that compared to other brands that are on the market, they are not as translucent, especially the root. If yeah. you apply this really thin on the on the surface, it looks it looks amazing. Other companies that are out there, it turns out too wide and too opaque and it looks unnatural so the learning curve with easy gum it's much easier than with other i agree with other people someone asked should you use uh, isopropyl alcohol ipa to clean prior to glazing or characterization hmm. do you know the answer to that never never heard of that, I don't um, clean the appliances with isopropyl, you know, after easy gum application and prior to glazing, but I do keep um, a jar or a, a, a small container of, of IPA and a clean brush. And I use that to get the goofs off. If I get a little too much red stain or red um, modifier on a tooth, I use a flat brush and some IPA to wipe it off. Awesome. Someone asked, can you get it too thick or too thin? Uh, and uh, will it shrink? I haven't heard of uh, easy gum shrinking. It's it's pretty geometrically stable, you know, whatever shape you have applied it in. But uh, maybe Jimmy, I think you've seen like if you get it too thin in some areas, right. then obviously that will shine through. And um, either of you had any experience with getting it too thick? Any comments on that? No, it's pretty easy to see if it needs to be thinned out. You just press a little harder and spread it out with your fingers. It's yeah. If Another do, thing is what you can do is if you um, prepare your PMMA correctly and you already have like these root forms established, so you carve it out in between the roots a little bit more, then it has a little bit more material between the roots and a little bit less material on the eminence of the roots and the roots shine through. And this looks much, much natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, uh, it, to, to overcome, let's say, an area where maybe you've gone a little bit too thin, that's why we developed the pink modifiers that are essentially identical in shade to the strip so that you can, you know, as, as, you know, as was demonstrated, you can actually put a little bit of that on, brush it over, and then build out that area, um, you know, so that you get kind of an even distribution. We have some questions coming in on the, the modifier shades. So I'm just going to share my screen just for those of you that want to see some of the details. So we have an easy gum master kit and that is, uh, comes with all of the shades of easy gum. And then we have a system of pink modifiers. Those pink modifiers uh, match the shade of the easy gum strips. And so that's more of like a flowable, to use for any adjustments or thickness corrections or whatever. And then the intense modifiers come in five different shades and they're all here on the website and you can see all of them. And of course you can order one at a time as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to reference uh, all the shades available in the uh, system. So I think we're winding down. 
Um, someone asked. Oh, questions. Oh, um, I don't know if you're seeing them or am I just seeing them, but. Do we need a, uh, do we need air cover gel for curing? I'm not sure I. So, so yeah, that's kind of the glycerin. Um, mo most composites need a glycerin because of the. Uh, 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 inhibition layer. Yeah, the inhibition layer. So actually easy gum was, was, was engineered uh, to after curing produce a almost non-negligible uh, inhibition layer. So you do not need um, to cover the prosthetic with a glycerin gel. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, read most of these, all of them. Let's see, can you do the same term? If you take some time applying this strip, is it going to cure on you in the ambient light? So Carson talked about that. If you're curing next to a window with direct sunlight coming in, if that UV exposure will for sure um, shorten your working time. Uh, if you're not exposed to direct UV light, it will extend it. Now, if you have a harvest light bar and you set it to the warm light setting, we've done some internal testing and it's between 25 and 45 minutes of working time under the, the warm setting under the harvest light bar. So it is designed to have extended working time, but if you're, you know, working outdoors or next to direct sunlight, that's for sure going to shorten it like it would uh, any other composite. Yeah. Next to a big window, you know, you, you want to be careful there, but if it's just under regular light, um, we have uh, verified that you can work up up to about 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes of working time. So there is an extended working time that's been, you know, designed into the, uh, the, the, the product. Oh, awesome. No, this is great. So much fun guys. Thank you so much for being here. Carson, Jimmy, Sasha, MB, any final words before we wrap things up? I mean, speechless. I just appreciate everybody's uh, uh, contribution. It's, you know, uh, seven o'clock EST here. Uh, the fact that you take the time to kind of learn about this material is uh, is humbling. Um, Jimmy and Karsten, what a privilege um, uh, to, to have you represent this tonight. Um, Rob, excellent job. Mary Beth, thank you for, for everything. And... Uh, all you technicians out there, we're for you. We love you. Um, we're here to serve you. And so uh, just appreciate um, the trust. And uh, hopefully you got a return on your attention tonight. That ultimately is our mission. So um, appreciate you all. We're always available um, to support any way we can. Awesome. I think we'll end with that. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Karsten, Jimmy. Good work. So much fun uh, hanging with you guys, learning from you guys. Appreciate it very, very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.